Hello. <clears throat> so as promised, I'm going to go ahead and talk about how to hook up this uh, HCO6 um, Bluetooth, which is currently sitting on top of a Patent Robotics motherboard uh, running on a TNC 3.2. I'm going to be able to run it and control it with an Android device. And uh, I'm going to build upon some previous code that I did in the last videos. Uh, but I'll post it so you can easily uh, pick it up from there. Um, the wiring is as described right here. Okay, I'm running this thing on 5 volts. So it's going to be getting 5 volts into the Bluetooth. The ground, of course, is ground. And then I have the receive and transmit hooked up to the Teensy's pins 1 and pin 0. Um, first thing I did, of course, was create an object uh, off the hardware serial port, which is on pins 1 and 0. And I called it Blue Serial, so we can utilize it. I created a couple of variables. I've got the out string, which is kind of my final string when I'm ready to actually look at the data that I've gathered. I've got my temp string. This temp string is the one that I'm going to take the characters from the buffers are coming off one by one and lock them together like a series of blocks until I can to complete the string. And of course, those individual characters will be stored one by one into the in character variable. Uh, the setup is very basic. I'm launching a window so we can see what's actually going to happen from the serial monitor. I'm going to hold it in a loop until the serial monitor is open so that we don't miss any uh, header information or any data that might string off. I'm then going to open up the, the uh, hardware uh, serial and set it at the same baud rate. I'm going to print out a ready just for good measure so we can see that the serial monitor is ready to go. And I'm throwing an extra half second delay just because I think it's a good idea. I'm not in a real rush. Anyway, here we are in the main loop. First thing we do is call the serial, uh, the get serial. And we go down here. And you can see it starts off by a little waiting game here. It's What it's going to do is it's going to get stuck in this loop until there's actually something in the buffer. Okay, So if it's equal to zero, it's just going to stay there. Um, as soon as it actually has something in the buffer, the first thing it does is it loads that first piece of that first um, uh, character into the variable in character. And then, of course, I'm looking for a terminating character, which is always a good idea. Kind of lets me know when things start and when they end. In this case, I've chosen the pound sign as my terminating character. And if it's the first character, likely who it is, it's not the terminating character, so it'll probably treat this as false, skip over it, and then it goes ahead and adds the in character to the temp string, which of course started off as an empty string, as you can see right here. Okay, So now it has that first character in it. And it's going to continue to loop in that order until it comes across that pound sign, the terminating character, in which case then it goes ahead and sets my temp string, which has been added up now several times, and it sets it to the out string. So we're going to push that back up into our main loop here in a minute, and we're going to see what it actually was. It's still going to go ahead and roll this uh, pound sign into the temporary string, and then I'm going to go ahead and purge the data in the string and just set it back to an empty string. And then for good measure, I'm going to go ahead and print the output that we actually saw. And if we jump back up here, I'm actually going to be creating a pad down here with this device so we can drive a robot around. And I'm going to put some basic uh, strings in here to control its motion, forward, back, left, and right. And in this case, it's going to check that string in each and every case to see if it is any of these val uh, variables uh, have been set. And if not, it's going to default to, well, I'm waiting for something to go on. So it'll, it'll uh, print this particular piece of data. So now let's go over to the Android. <clears throat> yep. So here we have the Android. Oh, I wish I wouldn't do that. Okay. And in this case, I'm going to use this application, which is a free download. And the first thing I'm going to do is, which is difficult because I'm having to do this via the monitor. I can't actually look at my screen. I need to choose. Now, I have multiple ones of these uh, things. So I'm going to figure out which one I've got sitting next to it. I'm going to discover. And then you can see, oh, I'm going to have to tilt this to me. 
that it has found the 2BFB. And the 2BFB is this top one here. So I'm going to connect to that one. And it's connected. All right. So let's go ahead and head done with that. And now let's take a clean pad like this one right here. Where I have nothing in it. And let's edit it. We're going to put some stuff in it. And in this case, oh, actually, or, sorry, I already have a pad started here. I'm going to click on this pad. And I'm going to edit it. And you can see I've actually put these, these strings in here. I type those in, that forward, that right, that back, that left. Okay. So these are the different button functions. Um, and when there's nothing going on, as soon as the button's released, it's going to put out the word done. I'm going to actually have it so that while you're holding the button, it will continuously send it. Okay. And it's going to send it in an interval of every 100 milliseconds, so 10 times a second. It's going to send, if I'm pushing the right or the left, it's going to continue to repeat that over and over and over again. Um, this is important. I have my terminating character. Okay. I've decided it's just so much easier to look for this. Uh, so I've decided, okay, let's end with a terminating character. And we're going to say okay. Okay. And now we're going to go back to the main screen. And we are now ready to run the little app we just created. And there we have it. And let me load this up. And I'm going to pause while it loads for the first time. Hold on. Okay, it's done loading. And of course, it spits out that ready that we put in there right off the bat. And now, if I push my finger on one of these pads, okay, you can see I can tell it that it's actually gathering the data. You can see it pop up here. There's the data output that it's actually seen. And then for the duration that you're holding the button, every 100 milliseconds or so, it tells you what it's doing. So it's clearly making it back up to here and it's spitting out this information here, like I'm going left, I'm going right, I'm going forward. So clearly this could be anything you want, controlling your robot. I could make it have its servo commands or well, anything, because it's, it's able to distinguish all these different strings. So hopefully that was use, useful and um, I'll probably see you again shortly because I'm going to make this thing um, send long distance communication via uh, uh, RF. So I'll see you a bit shortly. Bye.